OK, now for sequential function chart. So, same again. We need a new program organizational unit. So, POU down here, sequential function chart, SFC. So, here we go, SFC, one of those. And again, add it to the main task because we're going to be running it. SFCs are very good at uh, doing batch processes and anything where you need to step through. So um, often, a lot of these things here we're adding to the main task, you may actually call from a sequential function chart. So they are very good at calling other programs to, uh, to get, themselves, uh, get themselves running. So we have a nice over here. So in it. This is where it starts. This is where the, um, the sequential function chart begins. So this is likely to be you know, any process set up that you need to make. You know, any code or anything else that you need to run uh, will be associated with this to make sure everything's as it's supposed to be. So again, we've got a transition out of that uh, init out, and then we've got to jump back to, uh, to the init here. I'm just going to move off the, uh, the visualization, give us some room. So that true is going to flow straight through. So we're going to add a step. So we add a step in here. Okay, step zero. There's a whole bunch of um, IEC 61131 things that you can use around uh, steps in sequential function chart. But unless you have uh, declared a, um, a type for the step up in the variables, you don't actually get things like the, the dot t options for using timing. So here we've got step zero. So if you want to get use things like dot t for time on steps, then we need to add up in here a variable for step zero. Okay, and we need to declare it, and it needs to be SFC step type. Okay, so we're also going to use uh, switch one in here and I think we will use uh, a lamp one and two lamp one so here we have a ball and we'll use lamp two as well okay so note the semicolons up here in the structure uh, adheres to the same so and I'm going to want a second step so I'm going to put step one in here to go with uh, step zero. So we'll copy that in there. So paste it in. Oh, don't want two of them. We want step one. So after each step, you need a transition uh, that tells it when that step's done and to move on to the next step. So we will have a, another step in here. So that'll be step one. So the variable up here, SFC step type, is uh, associated with step one. Okay, and then after that we want another transition to say that we're done with that step, and then we want to jump back to, we don't want to go back to an init, we want to run back around to step zero. So we come in here, we initialize, that's set to true internally, comes in here, we run stuff, we shift through, we shift through. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to put, okay, I'm just going to dive in here to uh, where are we? Step zero, switch one. So here it is, our local variable, switch one, bang. So we're just going to grab that. So when that switch goes true, we're going to move out of the step. So we want an action on the step. So we want something to do. So the bit on the side here, uh, depending on, you know, dig into the help, there's a whole raft of different things we can put in here. So, you know, it depends on exactly what you want to do, but the end that uh, sits here says, only do this particular thing while the step is active and true. So I want lamp 1 to be true in here. So I want lamp 1 to be on. So uh, so this should work. Uh, in here I want an action for this step down here. Okay. And I want lamp 2 to be... So in here you could actually call. Yeah. So you could actually call a different POU. So you go out and run code while this step is active. That could be what you would, you want to do. So again, if you have a look in here, you see the different boxes. So this one, okay, this runs once when the step goes active. So you can do things, you know, like when that step first goes true, you can run particular code. Um, the end we've gone with, that code runs while the step is true. Uh, again, if you look at uh, the bottom one here, so this is, you know, 
an exit action. So when the transition goes true and we step out, then we run code as we finish up. So again, you know, we've got options over here. Um, so yeah, entry, uh, active, exit. So here are your three options for different actions. So each step you can have an incoming action, a while true action, and an exit action. So down here, I'm going to go with a um, a timed value. So if we go in here and go step one dot, so you'll see it's automatically come down here and given us some uh, some things that we can use. So we're going to go with the dot t. Okay, and I'm going to say, well, that is greater than uh, t hash because it's a time variable uh, 10 seconds uh, 10 secs so we'll see so that should be good oh, we'll just get in there so t hash tells us it's a time and I've written it in and said uh, so this should change once step one is greater than 10 seconds so the first step we need to turn switch one on and then uh, second step happens after 10 seconds and then we go back to the beginning so yeah, if we wanted to, as an entry uh, to step one here, we could actually set switch one to be uh, a value of false, which would automatically turn it off. Why don't we just do that? So what's this? Entry action. So on entry, uh, create a new action. So add it. Ooh. Ooh. Let's not do that. I haven't played with this enough. So we'll just go with this very, very, very simple basic for a start. So now I'm going to go to the visualization and edit this. It's what happens when you try and go off script. So here we go. New horizontal tab. So let's uh, get in here. Oh, we still appear to be online for some reason. Let's get offline. So let's go in here. Properties, we'll just pin this for the moment. So let's change this. So we don't want this one. We want switch one to be, okay, SFC, switch one. Thank you very much. Okay, good. So I'm not going to be using switch two. We want lamp one in here for the SFC. So lamp one, thank you. And we're going to need another lamp. So down here we go to the toolbox and we grab lamp switches and the like. And we'll take a second lamp over here. So move it over so it's nice and lined up. Grab the variable. Let's have a look. Let's grab lamp 2. So that should be all good. Let's try giving this a build and see if it's... Uh, Two errors. What have I done? Uh, step one entry uses step in it already defined in SFC test. Ah, that'll be because we've got that in there. We'll get rid of that. So now we'll be good. So we will push this down. Okay. Build's good. We've got a few warnings, but we're fine. So we've stepped in, okay. And you see the the timing timing up. Now, if I switch switch one up here, it should kick through to the next step, okay. There we go. Now, if I switch the switch off, it will stop when it comes through. So as soon as we get up to uh, ten seconds, this will jump through and go back to step one. There we go. And we'll sit here until such time as I switch switch one again. Okay, so there we go. I've turned it and through we go. So again, you could use times at each of them. You can put uh, you know, anything in here from a transition perspective that gives you a Boolean resolves to a true or false will work. So again, very, very simple SFC. So the, uh, the one to remember with this is if you want to use the time values in the uh, in the steps in uh, your transitions like this then you need to have put in this 
step type up here as a, uh, a container for all the values. So that's SFC. Thanks very much.